Hello gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be reacting to Mark Martel singing Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, this is of course not the first, nor will it be the last rendition of this masterpiece. However, I've heard that apparently at certain points in this performance you wouldn't be able to tell if it was Freddie Mercury or Mark Martel. That is obviously an extremely bold statement and one that I am more than keen to investigate, so... Oh yeah! Surprise! Look what we got! I wasn't expecting it to be quite so robust. Thank you very much for this. It's still very surreal for me that so many of you stick around so long and are so wonderful and lovely and supportive and kind and fabulous. I'm so immeasurably grateful that you do. Grateful. Yeah. So one of the greatest songs of all time is about to be sung by someone who is apparently very similar to one of the greatest singers of all time with a picture of what in my opinion is the greatest album of all time in the background, Grace by Jeff Buckley. Jeff Buckley is my absolutely most favourite singer ever. So seeing Jeff's face there is going to be a heightened experience. Okay, Bohemian Rhapsody, take one. Not really. Warts and all. Oh, very, very Freddy indeed. This little stretcheroo of the bottom lip. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? <laughs> Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, uh. look up to the skies and see. When the original track opens, the lead vocal melody is surrounded by thick, lush harmonies. No escape from reality. And of course he could have dubbed those in and kept it like the original, but no! To keep it a true one-take wonder, he's decided to deviate from the lead melody, occasionally hitting some of the harmony notes. Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. And because he's weaved in and out of harmony lead, harmony lead, you don't miss the lead and you don't miss the harmonies. Oh, the technique of dipping in and out of lead vocal to harmony can be so tacky. This was not tacky. No, no. Mama, Ooh, what's this just for killed a man, put a gun against his head, pulled my trigger, now he's dead. Mama. and I could just listen to it for a thousand hours. This type of distortion is actually really difficult to control as well because it's so light, like a little delicate little sprinkle of seasoning. And you can see how he's made way for that. He's widened his vocal tract with none other than... Face He's helping with his face. Back again this time tomorrow wide jaw position has allowed that little bit of extra space in the vocal tract for the vocal folds to do the extra flapping, which is what distortion is. Life had just begun. Usually breathy or falsetto singing is really difficult to control because we don't have the same regular breath pressure as when the vocal full, 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 vocal coat as when the vocal folds get to close completely in their oscillation for a clean sound. When we don't have that seal and the breath leaks through, 
we run the risk of running out of breath really fast or having an uneven kind of tone and vibrato, but he's guided it safely to the front of the ship, or pharynx in this case. Uh... And it's just give us this lovely delicate vibrato, but it actually has a lot of consistency because it's so deliberate, very good. More singers should do this little bottom lip thing. It sounds cool, it looks cool, it feels cool. Actually, it feels a bit strange, but it works. The proof is in the vibrato pudding. So his voice and his face are working as a very effective team. There is no eye in team or face. is just absurdly ridiculously amazing. He must have hands like bloody rakes to be able to do that so fast. He's managed to honour so many of the original compositional parts in this arrangement. He's an absolute demon with the old octave jumps. And this has enabled him to distribute many bass parts in the left hand and the lead guitar lines in the right hand. seems like the nicest most humble human like there's no air of arrogance about him he even takes time out of his performance to just look at the audience and just let them know that i'm actually finding this quite difficult i see a little silhouette of a mask got a moose got a moose will you do the fandango thunderbolt and lightning very very frightening me galileo galileo Nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare him this life from this monstrosity. Easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? Bismillah. No, we will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let you go. We'll not let you go. We'll not let you go. Let him go. No, 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 no. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia. Let me go. Beelzebub has a devil put aside for me, for me, for me. Yeah. He entered that section like an absolute vocal champion. It might have seemed to the naked eye that that mouth position on I, I see was overdone, too wide unnecessary. No! He made loads of space in his mouth for resonance, he lifted his larynx into a nice steady position, and he also lifted the soft palate. Now, you can find your very own soft palate, you just need to clean your thumb, because germs, and slide it over the roof of your mouth. You'll find this little spongy bit, and when you pull the face he just pulled to do, you'll feel it lift. So when we lift that soft palate, suddenly we have even more space to resonate the sound in our mouth. And I haven't even mentioned his switcheroo between thick folds and thin folds. Galileo! Galileo Control must be his middle name. And then how he did this melody to emulate the different harmony parts that come in, but with just himself. Magnifico! He used thin vocal folds for the high notes and thick vocal folds for the lower notes, so it really accurately emulated the qualities of the original version. So there he put the original backing vocal in the piano melody while he sustained the note. 
Oh, oh, the arrangement of this section is ridiculous. Like, it's so inspiring. Like, how did he think to do all that stuff? And he's still got the mental availability to spice up the little Mamma Mia. Oh, Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia. It was a very smart choice to keep the me note. Mommy. As opposed to the original. For two reasons. From an arrangement perspective, you really need the power to continue to build into this really cool rhythmic stabby section, and that power could only really come with a note low enough to sing it with a full voice. And from a performance perspective, was in a completely different place to everything he sang before. And as he had to sing this all in one take, it would have been really difficult to switch positions so rapidly. And if he did mess up there, it would have been a horrific shame. the master of the dip thong. <laughs> dip those thongs, Mark. He just shamelessly turns I into I oh. Because he knows that when he drops his jaw and makes that oh sound, he gets that fullness in resonance. And that's what he wanted. So I, I oh. Doesn't matter. We know he's saying I and not Eel. Because it's in context. Nobody's spitting eel. Every position and moment of resonance and distortion in this section is just... It's just flawless. It's flawless. Without flaw. a barbaric quantity of talent. What strikes me most about this is the harmonic and even sonic density that he's able to cultivate with just two components, piano and voice. There was just nothing missing. Usually we accept with an acoustic or piano voice cover of something that it will be much more sparse than the original with a lot of harmonic vacancies. But this was not a normal piano voice cover of a song. He did bloody everything. There was no multi-track in here at all. You can actually see the tracks as he records them on his Pro Tools session which is really cool actually because it further proves the point that he did it in one take just like my analysis videos which I never edit in any way I feel like I could talk about this for the next three hours and it's interesting because of course his tonal choices and positions are very similar to Freddie Mercury but this is very obviously not an impression the anatomy of his face and his neck is extraordinarily similar to Freddie Mercury's and he has a decent set of snappers on him too so of course their voices are going to resonate in a similar way however I think Mark has a slightly smaller voice than Freddie Freddie Mercury had a little bit more uh, bassy rumble to his voice whereas Mark has a little bit more shininess he's evidently very musically inspired by Freddie Mercury and I suspect Jeff Buckley as well and so if he does have that naturally similar vein of artistry, when he sings the same song as him, of course it's going to sound very reminiscent. He is just an absolutely perfect vocalist. He's got everything. He's got the technique, the expression, the variety of tone, like a personality that just... I was going to say ooze, but I remembered that that word makes me feel ill. Jumps out and grabs you. I'd just be really excited to see how he expresses different songs and... Ooh! That was phenomenal. <laughs> 
Every note or sometimes small phrase in singing consists of three components. An onset, how the note is birthed, or we could have just said begun. Sustain, how the note is held. And an offset, how the note or phrase finishes. We can kind of customize combinations of onset, sustains and offsets. Look up to Breathy onset. To the skies and Close sustain. Offset. You could sing that same phrase with a completely different combination of onset, sustain, offsets. Look up to the skies and see. Look up to the skies and see. <laughs> I don't know. It's an artist's decision how they want to express themselves, what feels best in their voice, how we're going to build or fluctuate dynamics in the song. For example, if we use breathy onsets and offsets, we're naturally going to have less velocity and intensity, that's the word. When we talk about someone having superior vocal control, that's what it means, knowing how to start, sustain and finish. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know in the comments or over on my Discord as it is always my pleasure. Have a wonderful day, I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye!